Welcome to Digital Creative Designs. Uh, my name is Gilbert Lawrence. I'll be taking you through a typical workflow when I edit photos. So without further ado, let's jump in. Now I'm using Lightroom for all my edits. Um, and uh, Lightroom in conjunction with Photoshop. Lightroom is basically a the primary edits that I affect through Lightroom. So it's really indispensable tool for making selections, primary adjustments to your ex exposure on photos, etc. To grade photos, to select them, etc. It's also got an extensive library to help you with metadata, assist you transposing some of the edits that you've already made by batch editing. Now I will explain you a bit more in depth what I mean about uh, you know that it's it's also as a, as a very good extensive preset workflow okay so i'll start off i'll look at the model i'll look at the pick that i want to edit and once i've settled on the pick and i'm happy with it i will ju just jump in uh, look at it you know okay. it's not that the sharpest image but yeah i can work with that so from the library module, I'll then jump into the develop module by pressing the, the D button. And this is where I will just, you know, add a little bit of exposure to my image, a little bit of contrast. And I'll also do my lens calibration and my lens profile. There you go. That's more like it. I'll also do a bit of um, cropping to help with recomposition. There we go. And that's the image that's been recomposed. So I will also separate my foreground from my background just to get it a little bit of a, a lift in the dynamic range of my foreground dynamic range from lighter to darker areas so i'm selecting my subject and this is um like magic in uh, lightroom it will then use uh, adobe sensei to select my foreground and i can then work separately separately after creating a mask on my subject, my model. Okay, so once I'm happy with uh, my foreground, I can also then go and give the background a bit of a lift and also a color change um, to get rid of the bluish cast at the bottom of my image. So to do that, I'll just then reduce my my I'll desaturate the background and I'll open it up slightly and warm it up a bit and that's the image it's much more appealing so to export that to Photoshop I'll press ctrl E all right now that I'm in Photoshop I'll then take you through the workflow from here now I've got the layer stack. Now I will then duplicate my layer in Photoshop. I'll then just zoom into my model to look at the pimples, blemishes um, and spots that I need to remove. And then I'll just remove my spots from my model's face. I'll remove her spots please bear with me i'll alternate between the spot healing brush and the heal patch tool so i'll switch to the patch tool so the patch tool is basically to clean up the skin as the name denotes patches so i'll just circle around the patch and i'll move it to a spot where and it looks much more even toned with no damage or imperfections on the skin. 
Okay, let's see how that pans out. All right, so from here, I can try and do um, some frequency separation by using the Retouch Academy specialization panel. Uh, just to get me, because, you know, once you do a lot of edits, like my work involve a lot of pageant shoots we i have a lot of models that i need to work through and i find that the retouch academy tool is a huge time saver to get the work out there to edit quicker to add to my the speed of my workflow and um, just to get me a little bit of a you know to work faster Okay, all right, so I think that's about it, what I can do with the pimples and blemishes before I switch over to the Retouch Academy tool. So from here, I can use the Gaussian Blur option. And um, you must just then adjust it's so in order to in order to hide all the the blemishes on the skin and those imperfections uh, on the skin and then once you're happy with that then it will open a group folder called frequency separation so i'll then go on to the correcting tones now to correct your tones you must switch to the mixing brush tool so the mixing brush tool is over here now i'm not going to take you through all the settings that i've chosen like this this is all the settings here like the opacity the flow no that's not the mixing brush this is the mixing brush it's got width load mix and flow so I find that the settings that I have on top here that works best for me so the idea with the mixing brush is to look at your model skin and where you see harsh lines intersecting you know um, where, where there's no fade between light and dark areas or you see patches and blotches what the mixing brush does using frequency separation is then you'll paint on the areas to make this sure there's no hard edges hard edges as you go along painting let me just demonstrate to you so your first sample like for instance here i've got light areas and they've got dark areas then i've got another light area over here so the idea is to make it even but also bear in mind still to retain the contour still re retain the depth of your image because you cannot have one flat image it's very un unappealing so look out for the contouring of the skin of the shape of the face when you do this when you're familiar with dodging and burn, burning, keep in mind or bear in mind that you'll for you'll use the same methodology. You know when you paint on to your model's face from dark to light areas. So I'll then sample, for instance, a light area, and then I'll just you know do circular movements to make sure that all the harsh and hard edges are smoothed out i've got darker areas here i can do that and be in mind that you should separate and retain your dark and light areas while doing that and it's basically just to get rid of all the hard edges Okay, this is all the hard edges. Go 
on, let's see. Okay. All right. Uh, it's nice, it's shaping up to be nice. Uh, even tone on the skin. And then, um, you know, once you make a mistake, you can always go back to your layer, add a layer mask, and then you can get rid of that, um, that stroke that you've made in error. Okay, so I'm happy with what I have. To go back to your high res, just select your high frequency layer texture again. And this is what you are presented with a more much more even even tone right but now to get to your um the surface of the skin area the the little you know the pimples the the nooks and crannies and the imperfections on the skin it's like a bitmap image with pimples so do that you switch to the um clone stem tool and then you zoom into the area that you want to start working on for instance if I look at this area over here I can also sample my area of imperfection and then I can just paint over it to make sure I get rid of the pimples like for instance here's pimples over here and then that's what I do. Alright, that's about it. I don't want to change the model to such an extent that I completely change the shape of a face. I think that still retains her character, how people see her and perceive her. And she'll be happy just by performing that slight subtle changes okay now after this you realize that the document size have moved from 200 megabits megabytes to about nearly 600 megabytes it's because of this frequency separation layer so i can now create a stem from that image and get rid of my frequency separation group and once I do that, you can see that the document size has reduced again to 349. And I can also delete other layers that I'm not going to use. Um, and further reduction happens in the size of my document. So I can now go and um, do a selection a selections a subject selection because i want to just uh, do a few edits using lumensia to do my dodging and burning and i only want to focus on the model without affecting the background so uh, this is my lumensia tool i press shift and what it does it create layers with blend if commands uh, that's a different science altogether so typically you choose from highlight to mid tones to blacks and you can then independently adjust the intensity of the highlights mid tones and shadows to give you that separation on your skin okay and then I'll separate my shadows a bit and that's how I get the depth in my skin tones okay I think I'm happy with that so I'm now just gonna select my subject just to make sure that I'm only affecting I'm only affecting my model because the background has got 
a range of tonality in the luminance of the image that might spill over onto my model. So I want to separate that. So I'm going to create a mask after my selection and then move it over to my Lumenzia adjustments. And that's how I got to only focus on the model. Yep, and there we go. I don't just to pin, need to position it better. And it my bug. Once I'm happy, I can go Control S to save my image, and it will save it then back to Lightroom. I can then just mark my image as an image that has been edited in uh, Photoshop and ported over to Lightroom by using Adobe's dynamic link. And uh, let's have a full screen preview. Voila! And that's the edit that I've made using frequency separation, Lightroom for prime edits, and basic edits, you know, to lift the exposure and then Photoshop to make the adjustment using special specialization panels like uh, Retouch Academy and Lumenzia to work on the blemishes and spots on the model's skin and um, using frequency separation and um, also dodging and burning to create some depth. So thank you for joining me and uh, see you in the next video. Thank you.